So this past Thursday at Clarion Limestone High School, uh, Coach Eads reported his 639th career head coaching victory to officially make him the all-time winningest coach in KSAC history, passing the legendary coach Don Semmerich of Union. Coach Heath has now coached 37 years with a record of 640 wins, 238 losses, with 13 District 9 championships. With those numbers, coaches averaged over 17 wins a season for 37 years. I think that an average season for Coach Heath is 17 wins in a season. <laughs> and before we get to the presentation this evening, I'd like to recognize a few people besides Coach who have made this milestone possible. Today, we are privileged to have in attendance Coach Heath's mother, Shirley. His son Garrett and his wife Linda. <laughs> from all of us, from all of us in this community, we'd like to say thank you for sharing your son, your father, and your husband with all of us. And Linda, I do believe there is definitely a special place in heaven for a wife who puts up with her husband coaching for 37 years. <laughs> So thank you again. Big, big round of applause for the Now I know Coach Eve is probably really upset with all of us because he does not like that they can do it. He probably just wants to play and he doesn't like surprises. But hopefully this next surprise will uh, make it all better and he won't be as mad at us. But we have one more surprise for you and here today to present you with a trophy in recognition of this monumental occasion is the one and only Legendary coach Don Stemmer. <laughs> Anybody had to break the record, he was glad to shoot. 
And another thing, and I think this is the ultimate compliment, if he had a kid playing basketball right now, he would want you to be their coach. So I think that is the ultimate compliment a coach can give another coach. And the respect that I, Jason, you have said, the respect that these two have for each, for each other is unbelievable. And you'll never see it probably ever again in sports in Tyree County. So I'm done talking, so we get the game going. So without uh, any further ado, um, we're going to have Chris have Coach Stemmer present this. Um, from the Keystone Athletic Department, the administration, the boys' basketball boosters, all the players that Coach East has coached and changed their lives over many, many years, we would like to have Coach Stemmer present you, Coach East, with this trophy. The all-time winningest coach in history. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Congratulations. Picture quick. We don't have any audio right now. <laughs> okay. this. We're going to have to just do video. I've no audio. Nothing's working. Check, check. Check one, two. No, nope. see it's over here. Something's wrong with something. Well, they, they haven't started. they got over 15 minutes. They haven't started the podcast, so we're good. You can keep this. Yeah. Sorry. 
They're still doing talking. Did you feel that trophy? Did you lift that trophy's like 10 pounds? It's huge. It's really heavy. I would, where do they bring, oh, the mic's right there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll just come up when it's time and switch oh, okay. it. It'll be a lot easier for you. Oh, okay, very good. I, I don't have to be here then, now then. Yeah, okay. I think that'll be the easiest. Okay, I'll just wait. And good evening and welcome to Keystone High School. You had a chance there to see all of the uh, pregame festivities with Coach uh, Stemmeridge here honoring um, Coach uh, Heath here at the Keystone High School. What a fantastic honor uh, to see Coach Stemmeridge out here. And uh, so I heard a few words from him, Bob, and certainly one of the, uh, well, not one, but a couple great legends here uh, in this entire uh, area. I would like to know what those two have forgot about basketball. At the end of the day, uh, they definitely forgot more than what I'll ever know. They're two legends. They're two guys that will be the first to tell you that it wasn't because of them that that they had the success. It was because of the players they had. And, you know, coaches like that, they just aren't coming along the ranks. They're not able to really stay long enough to establish those types of numbers. Uh, we're fortunate that we have, of course, these two uh, in the southern half of the district, that rich history between the two as well as, you know, we've had the opportunity to cover another legend in the district obviously an Aaron Strop to the north, but that's a whole uh, different uh, discussion for another day. But these two guys, uh, great programs. I think if you talk to them, they're not so much uh, worried about did, did they turn out great basketball players. They more uh, than likely will tell you, I wanted to turn out good people. And, and certainly they've done a lot of that. A lot of successful guys went through that program. A lot of people have trans for the skills they learn in basketball to success in, in family and life, and I think that speaks volumes about each program. All right, we're in the Carly Tire pregame show here at Keystone High School. Tonight it is Karn City taking on the Keystone Panthers. This is the final night where these uh, records count, and uh, they're going to total things up and then figure out who's going to be playing who. We should be finding out uh, tomorrow all of that information. So. Uh, it's going to be fast and furious. And this is a big game here tonight for Keystone. You know, when you look at positions uh, for Carn City as well, Carn City kind of sitting at that top spot in that South Division. But uh, anything can happen at this point of the season. So we'll take a time out. We'll pause about uh, three minutes, and we're going to come back out, talk about key players and the governor's keys to the game. And you're listening to uh, Laurel Eye Clinic District 9 Basketball. We're in the Carly Tire pregame show live on ExploreClaringon and D9Sports.com. Just minutes south of downtown Clarion on Route 68, CNA Trees has been in the nursery, landscape, greenhouse, garden center, and gift room business for 30 years. With over an acre of retail, a great place to find that perfect plant, tree, or gift for you or a friend. We have you covered on your landscape projects and home decor from start to finish. Stop by CNA Trees, one and a half miles south of Clarion Mall on Route 68 open seven days a week. Be sure to follow us on Facebook. This is Corey. He made two big mistakes. His first mistake was not going to Laurel Eye Clinic to have bladeless LASIK. 
His second mistake was trying to pet what he thought was his cat without wearing his glasses. Don't be like Corey. Call Lorelei Clinic. Homeowners and do-it-yourselfers, right now is a great time to redo your kitchen into a space you'll love. At Kale's Factory Direct Kitchens, we'll help you design and build a beautiful custom-built hardwood kitchen that will last, and you'll save money. How? At Kale's, there are never middleman markups, hidden charges, or sales commissions that could add 40%. Don't overpay for your kitchen cabinets at big box stores. Get them direct from Kale's Factory Direct. One of the biggest risks to your future could be running out of money during a longer-than-expected retirement. Many people have not yet taken the time to determine if they will have enough assets to last throughout retirement. Our Retirement Income Evaluator can help you develop a roadmap and actual recommendations. To learn more, stop by our office located at 162 South 2nd Avenue in Clarion. Give us a call at 2223-9990 or visit JennyClarion.com. Jenny Montgomery Scott, LLC, member NYSE, FINRA, and SIPC. Sweet Basil Italian Restaurant and Bar in Shippenville offers daily specials for dine-in or takeout. Burger Sunday, Ravioli Monday, Lasagna Tuesday, Wings on Wednesday, Pasta Night Thursday, Fish Friday, and Prime Rib Saturday. In addition to the popular specials, there's a wide variety of pasta, pizzas, sandwiches, salads, appetizers, and homemade desserts. There's an option on the menu for every member of the family. Sweet Basil crafts their own bread, dough, sauces, and pies to give an authentic Italian cuisine and a one-of-a-kind experience. Sweet Basil, located off of Exit 60 of I-80 on Paint Boulevard, strives to invest in the local economy by supporting local farmers and using and promoting their products. To view their menu, visit Sweet Basil Italian Restaurant and Bar on Facebook. Call 814-226-7013 to place your takeout. All right, back here at Keystone High School, Mike Kalinowski, Governor Bob Dunkel, live tonight on the EYT Media Network. And it's in the Carly Tire pregame show as we take a look at uh, some of the Luton's plumbing, heating, and air conditioning players to watch in this one. Two teams very familiar with Bob. Uh, two teams uh, um, having uh, good seasons. Carn City on top down there in the south, but uh, Keystone has been right there the whole way. And uh, when you look at Carn City, of course, uh, this is a team led by a uh, pretty good guard up top and a big guy inside, and they've got a great supporting cast as well. Well, certainly, you know, you're talking about Chase Bailey. Bailey is the school's all-time leading scorer. This is a guy who's got a ton of athletic ability, handles the ball, makes great decisions. Certainly, uh, too, is a pretty solid defensive player. It's going to be a big factor in the ball game. And a guy who is perhaps on the cusp of history tonight is Nathan Waltman. He is just 20 points shy of that 1,000-point plateau. You know, not to mention, of course, he's accompanied by Micah Roop. Micah is another one of those guys that really has been able to light it up throughout this entire season. Luke Kramer, another guy. Mike, uh, you've been impressed with him the last couple of times. We've had the opportunity to cover him. Kramer just has that ability to find the open shot, takes high percent shots, makes good effective decisions. All in all, this is a tough bunch to deal with. Always are. When you look at those Panthers, too, how about... Uh... Uh, these guys, you got uh, Sell out there, Wingard, Hogue, uh, Say, Pierce, just to name a few. Uh, good uh, supporting crew off the bench. One thing about Greg Heath, if you're on the bench, you always got to be ready. You never know. Uh, he's almost like uh, line changes as hockey in hockey when it comes to how he goes about substitutions. Well, no question about that. And I think that keeps all the coaches honest. You know, it's a, it's a difficult night. You don't know. One night that can be a guy step up. You know, a guy, too, that uh, has had moments stepping up. Throughout the season, Brandon Pierce, another guy to keep in mind. And certainly, uh, you know, we have seen the likes of Wingard and, and Sal and even Heater, you know, come up and make some significant contributions. They keep a lot of fresh legs out there. Really, this offense, Mike, is predicated on good decision-making. And if they make the right decisions, they can beat anybody on a given night. All right, those again are your uh, Luton's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning players to watch. We'll take another about three-minute timeout. We'll be back, Governor's Keys to the game, and then we'll have all the pregame introductions and more here from Keystone High School. Tonight, it is Carn City here at Keystone, and you're listening to the Carly Tire pregame show, part of Laurel Eye Clinic District 9 Basketball on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. Located at 511 Main Street in Shippenville, All-American Awards and Engraving is expanding to provide even better customer service with that personal small-town feel. 
Father Jim Carroll and son Ian are now the co-owners of the newly expanded 5500 foot facility that is now open and ready for business. From embroidery to engraving to screen printing to personalized gifts, All American Awards and Engraving is ready to help you. Make your organization, business, school team, or event stand out with All American Awards and Engraving's quality promotional products. Visit their showroom for apparel, trophy, and awards ideas at 511 Main Street or visit their website at allamericanhq.com. Owners and operators, if your business depends on your truck, then we've got you covered. From simple oil changes to complete engine rebuilds, Bauer Truck Repair has the tools and the know-how to get the job done. We also offer 24-hour roadside assistance anywhere, anytime, any weather. Our techs are ready to get your truck fixed and back on the road. We even offer towing and load transfer services. At Bauer Truck Repair, we understand that every minute and every dollar counts, so trust your business with our business. Bauer Truck Repair, located off exit 60 in Chippenville. You can also find us online at BauerTruckRepair.com or call us at 814-226-6023. That's 814-226-6023. At Tri-County Homes, we strive to keep you, our customer, involved in the process of building your dream home and making sure it is the perfect design to fit your needs. While the home of your dreams may come from one of our many floor plans, others may want to redesign a plan to make that home the perfect home. Make adjustments to the floor plans, choose additional options, and much more. The best part is you don't need any experience. Even when brought a quick idea drawn on a simple dinner napkin, it's no problem for the designers at Tri-County Homes. Homes, we can take your idea and turn it into your dream home. So break out all of those great home ideas and stop in or call today. Let's turn your dreams into reality. See more at tricountyhomes.com. Stop in or call toll free 1-800-540-1295. Free factory tours are also available. At Tri-County Homes, we strive to keep you, our customer, involved in the process of building your dream home and making sure it is the perfect design to fit your needs. While the home of your dreams may come from one of our many floor plans, others may want to redesign a plan to make that home the perfect home. Make adjustments to the floor plans, choose additional options, and much more. The best part is you don't need any experience, even when brought a quick idea drawn on a simple dinner napkin. All right, back here at uh, Keystone High School, Mike Kalinowski, Governor Bob Dunkel. Tyler Oaks all here this evening as we bring you this uh, Keystone Shortway Conference basketball game between Carn City and Keystone this evening. Boys contest, and we're in the Carly Tire pregame show. Great pregame uh, um, introduction. Uh, coach Heath, of course, with his uh, wins as coach uh, in the league, and uh, Don Stemmerich coming in, uh, and uh, just the two of them meeting. And Bob and I talked about the history there and uh, two great coaches uh, right here in this uh, local area, doing fantastic things, not only uh, for basketball, but for the communities as well. Well, Bob, as uh, we continue here in this one, in this pregame show, time to take a look at the uh, Gatesman Auto Body Governor's Keys to the Game. We've seen both of these teams in action. We've seen them compete before. Uh, what do you think each team needs to do to come out with a win? I think for Carn City, it is important, Mike, to try and get everybody involved early on in the ball game offensively. Whoever has the hot hand, certainly you can make adjustments and go towards them, feed them a little more uh, as the game unfolds. But you have to play smart offensively, manufacture some plays defensively. Use your size. Be physical if you can do all that. And, of course, you're going to have to adjust to the Keystone defense. Keystone will show you a couple of different looks. They're going to keep you honest. Now, for Keystone, it's a tougher task at hand. Um, I, I think that, you know, they don't necessarily have all the matchups they want. But as a result, you can, you can make some adjustments to help yourself out a little bit. In other words, you can camouflage a lot of the things and create matchups of, of your own certainly that you can benefit from. And I think one of the big keys is you have to also be patient. They love to go ahead and connect on those three-point shots. But, Mike, if they're not there, you can't take them. You can't force them. 
And certainly this is something that as the game unfolds, Coach Heath will be willing to make adjustments. However, I don't think you're going to see anything out of the offense on Keystone that we haven't seen during the course of the season. Probably we'll see just base defense as well because in the end, this is a tune-up game for the playoffs, Mike. Uh, certainly it's important, but by the same token, you don't want to give away too much for the up-and-coming playoffs. All right, those again are your Gates Manzano body, Governor's Keys to the game. We're just about ready for the pregame introductions here at uh, Keystone High School. We'll have those and the anthem as well. We're going to bring it all to you live as we get set for the PA announcer here at Keystone High School. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Keystone High School for tonight's KSAC Boys Basketball Contest between the Kremlins of Arn City and your very own Keystone Panthers. <laughs> At this time, would everyone please rise and gentlemen remove your hats for the playing of our national anthem. Introductions here, and again, starting lineups are brought to you by Janie Montgomery Scott. Want to thank him for that again for Carn City at Sherwin Bailey, Kramer, Waltman, and Roop, 
And for Keystone itself, Wingard, Hogue, Say, and Pierce. And we're just about set to go here from Keystone High School. Should be a good one here tonight between these two. It's been uh, throughout the season. And again, this is the last game that counts as far as playoffs go. And again, if you just joined us late, opportunity for history in this one as Nathan Waldman needs 20 to get that 1,000-point plateau. Certainly guy can make it happen, too. We're getting set for the MB Property Care tip-off. And our first quarter sponsored by Kale's Kitchens. Tyler getting all ready to go down there as we get set for this one. Roop and Say get set at center court, controlled by uh, Karn City. Ball to the right side, Bailey fakes, and he's going to bring it back up top. Look at the offense set up here for these Gremlins. Bailey, one of those players we talk about being around forever. Sure seems like it. <laughs> All right side to Sherwin, down to the corner. Sharoub, <coughs> excuse me, back up top to Bailey. And controlled by Sherwin near the half-court circle. Down the left side, that's Kramer, back up top. Now to the free throw line to Waltman. They're double teaming him. All right side, Sherwin, up top, Bailey. Now left side, Kramer. Kramer fakes. Back up top, Bailey. Bailey around the defense, into the lane. Kicks it out. Kramer will get the shot from the left side. It's good. That's a three-pointer. Eric Schick agency three-pointer to get things started. Mike, I know Kramer's a guy that really has caught your attention early on in the season. You've been impressed with his play as, it, as the season's unfolded. Ball to say at the free throw line. Ball left side. Tried to dump it in, but Waltman's going to steal that away. So 3-0 here, Carn City. Just underway in the Kales Kitchens first. Amazing what that wingspan will do you if you use it. Do for you if you use it. All right side to Sherwin. Back up top to Bailey. Bailey to Waltman. Going to play a little bit of catch. A little bit of patience here. Three to nothing. Carn City up on this one. Here's Sherwin to the right side. Spins back around. And down to the corner to Root. Dumps it into Waltman. But stole it away that time. Stole it away by Sell. A nice job there by Sell. Does the pickpocket move. Long shot taken by Pierce off the front of the rim. No good. Big rebound by Roop underneath. Ball ahead to Sherwin. Here Sherwin fires the three-pointer. That's off the side of the rim. No good. Rebound by Winger. So far, each team having some looks at the hoop. Only Carn City connecting with that three. So down to the baseline. To Wingard, Wingard picks up his dribble, finds Say, Say to the free throw line. Say puts up the shot in the paint, rolls around, doesn't go, got his own rebound. Say turnaround shot, good. Say didn't give up, good job. It's 3-2, Carn City by one. A nice, patient, good second, third look there by Say. Ball down to the corner to Sherwin, back up top to Bailey. Root controls. Back to Bailey. Now Roop left side, top of the key. Down to the corner, long shot taken by Sherwin on the way, no good. Rebound pulled away underneath by Sell. Again, a nice look, good job by Sell, getting the position to come down off the board. Pierce. We'll work it back up top of the key. Tried to pass that off to Sell, and it's going to go over the timeline. It'll be an over and back. And it goes to Carn City. Keystone starting off, uh, Bob, doing a nice job on the boards against uh, what you would think would be controlled by Carn City. Yeah, doing a great job, actually. Positioning is the key. Ball down to the corner to Sherwin. Tried to dump it into Waldman, but it uh, goes a little long, and it is a say with the takeaway. Here comes Hogue. Ball off of Say's uh, feet, but gets it back here. Comes back up top to sell. 4.42 to go. Quarter moving along here. 3 2 Carn City. Carn City and a man here. Here's left side to Wingard. Wingard fires that three point shot. And how about Wingard down into three to give Keystone the lead 5 to 3. Was not 100% certain whether or not he wanted to take the shot. Great decision on his part to make it happen. Here's Bailey in the paint over to Roop. Roop shot good. Roop, good move on the baseline. Good pass from Bailey. We're tied at five. Wingard on the left side. To Pierce, back over left side. Sell with a long shot. Off the side of the rim, no good. Rebound is by Waltman. They're going to get uh, Wingard coming over the bag. A little too much contact there out of Wingard. Is he and Waltman both going for the ball? 
So coming into the ball game for Wingard will be Heater. Nice steady pace in this one in a 5-5 ball game, 357 opening quarter play. Roop controls left side top of the key to the right side. Down into the corner to Kramer, back up to <coughs> top to Bailey. Bailey driving on the baseline. To Roop, Roop driving into the paint, but he's going to travel first. Just a split second of indecisiveness creates that. Keystone, led by Hogue, will bring it across midcourt. Here's a drive to the hoop. Nice drive, too, but it's off the mark by Sell. Here comes uh, Karn City on the break. Bailey will lead it, kicks it to Waltman in the corner. Waltman fakes drives on the baseline. Into Roop. Roop shot good. They're going to call the charge on Waltman. He doesn't like the call. The official made it clearly. He disagrees. We'll go the other way. And see, that's the difference, you know, between he and a lot of players. He disagrees with the call. Never really looked directly at the official. Just shook his head. No, heads the other way. I like that. McHenry checks in here along with uh, Cameron Easton. Number five all game here. 3.22 on the clock. McHenry across the timeline to Easton, right side top of the key. Bounce pass down into the paint. The shot by Say is good. How about 7-5 Keystone? Say now four points in the ball game. Kramer takes a couple of dribbles, backs off near the center circle to the right side. That's Bailey. Bailey on the baseline. Bailey to Sherwin. Back to Bailey. Oh, that's blocked by Say. Nice job by Say to get a hand up. Here comes Keystone. Easton to the baseline. Puts up the shot. Blocked by Rupert. but they're going to call the foul. And up to the line will go Easton here to shoot a couple. Easton at the line. Looking for his first opportunity at points. Shot is up and nothing but net. That's money in the bank. Out of Cameron Easton. Makes the first shot count. Giving his team the 8-5 to five lead. Next shot's up. And rattles the cage and goes in. 9-5 lead. Bailey cross midcourt. This is to Sherwin, back to Bailey, deep three, and it counts. How about that, Eric Schick Agency three-pointer, and that'll make it 9-8 Panthers here, just a one-point ball game. Up top, it's McHenry. Yeah, two three-pointers, interestingly enough, for Carn City. The defense not allowing the typical penetration Carn City likes to get. McHenry, behind the back dribble, hands it off to Easton, and then... Uh, Cell driving, Cell tried to dump like a scoop shot, but it's knocked away by Roop, and here we go with Bailey on the other end. Bailey, three-pointer on the way, and there you go again. Bailey, another three-pointer, and it is now 11-9, Carn City. Get a timeout taken, quick 30-second timeout here by Coach Heath. We'll keep it here, too, and timeouts are brought to you by Gatesman Heating, Plumbing, and Air Conditioning. You can give them a call at 814-72-3280, located right up here in Shippenville, not too far away. Hey, Coach, he's going to make an adjustment. We talk different times. Some timeouts are just to stop the momentum. Other times it's to make an adjustment. This is one of those make an adjustment timeouts. He sees a couple of looks he did not like out of his defense, wants to prevent that three. Well. Can you see up here 11 to 9? Hogue back in the ball game here for the Panthers. Takes the place of uh, given Sell a breather here. Easton works it across the timeline here for the Panthers. 145 to go here in Kale's Kitchen's first quarter. Easton down the right side of the lane, kicks it out to the right to McHenry. McHenry in the lane, puts it up. Nice job, rolls around, uses all the rim, and we're tied here at 11. So a minute and a half to go in the Kale's Kitchen's first. Bailey on the right side. That's Tate Bailey. Down to the corner. Back up top to Bailey and finds a brother. Chase Bailey with the basketball. Fakes drives. Kicks it to Kramer. 
Kramer comes top of the key over to Tate Bailey. He finds Chase. Chase chasing on the baseline. Puts up the shot. It doesn't go. Rebound pulled down by Say. Here comes Keystone. Just under a minute. We're tied at 11. Here's Easton on the other end with Roop on him defensively. Up top to Say. Say kicks it out to the left side to Easton. Easton driving. And Easton's going to have it blocked. It goes out of bounds. Roop and Kramer both getting an arm, a hand on that basketball. And it will stay Keystone ball knocked out of bounds. Easton looking for the call and the foul. Didn't get it. All right, into Heater on the inbound, and he can't connect on that one. Rebound by Roop. 41 seconds. Ball to the right side to Tate Bailey. Up top to Chase. 34 seconds. First quarter moving right along here at Keystone. Ball to Kramer in the corner. And uh, back out to Kramer. Kramer, he's going to travel. Yeah, that time a little give and go between Gehring and Kramer. Gehring really wasn't in a good position to make the shot, so it dishes back to Kramer, and result, travel occurs. 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Tied at 11 here at Keystone. Ball up top, say, working the basketball. Stolen away by Chase Bailey, and Bailey with an easy layup on the other end. It's 13-11. Still nine seconds, though, for Keystone to work with. Here come the Panthers. Here's Easton with it. Four seconds, three seconds, say, two seconds. Say he'll take the shot at the free throw line. No good. And we go to quarter number two. It's 13-11 in favor of Carn City. Take a quick timeout. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic District 9 Basketball. It's live on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. <laughs> We want to say thanks. Thanks, of course, to our customers. After all, you're the reason we're here, and your support means everything to us. But as we all face the disruptions of this unprecedented time, we owe special appreciation to our community's first responders, medical professionals, and caregivers. In today's battle for the health of our families and neighbors, we're in your debt for your heroism, generosity, and caring. Thank you. All right, here we go. Quarter number two here from Keystone High School. Mike Kalinowski, Governor Bob Dunkel, Tyler Oaks all with you here tonight. And the second quarter is brought to you by Next Step Therapy. The Panthers will have the basketball as we start quarter number two. Ball knocked away. Here's Bailey with it. Chase Bailey has it blocked on the other end by Hogue. Uh, McHenry kicks that ball ahead to Heater. Heater puts up the shot, and it's no good. Rebound in the paint by Wingard. It's no good. Rebound by Gary. Boy, I'll tell you what. We got a lot of banging going on inside there, and going to get fun here in this one. Here's Kramer over the left side, down toward the corner, back up top it goes to Tate Bailey, back to Kramer, Kramer fakes, drives, back up top to Bailey, three-point shot on the way, in and out, no good, the ball tipped it into the hands of Winger. I like the up-paced tempo, I'd like to see a few more points, Mike, but we're having fun nonetheless. McHenry underneath, and the pass is just off the mark to Hogue, and Bailey comes out with it, that's Chase. Chase to the left side to Gehring, and then down to Kramer, back up to Gehring, and controlled by Tate Bailey in the right corner. He fakes, kicks it up top. Chase Bailey, long three-pointer, and how about another Eric Schick agency three-pointer? It's 16-11, Carn City. That is money in the bank. 11 points out of Chase Bailey here early on at quarter number two. Here's Hogue in the lane, drives, and the charge is going to be called on Hogue. And that time, I'll tell you what, the big guy, Waltman, set himself up well to take that one. Well, somehow I think he can absorb it a little bit with that size. Very strong young man. But a good heads up play in his part, of course. 16 to 11, Carn City looking to extend that lead. Bailey across the timeline to Tate Bailey in the corner, back up top to Chase. Another deep three point shot, that time no good. That ball's loose, and who's going to come up with it? It's Hogue. Hogue quickly down the court into the paint. Driving shot taken by Sell. He took that in traffic. Great job by Sell. 
And that makes it 16-13. Yeah, if Sell doesn't launch that when he's going to commit the travel, he gets his first bucket of the night. Makes it a three-point ball game. Gehring left side down to the corner. Back up top it goes to Gehring. Controlled by Bailey. That's Chase Bailey. Back to uh, Gehring and down to the corner to Kramer. Kramer. And Gehring finds Tate to Bailey on the right corner open, but now he's covered. Up top to Chase. Chase to Gehring. Back to Bailey. Bailey behind the back dribble. Almost lost it. Makes it back up. Gives it to Tate to uh, Bailey. Chase now controls back to Tate. Good ball work here by Carn City. Working for a good shot. They're up by three. 5.48 to go. The next step therapy second. Waltman on the baseline. Waltman has a block from behind by Winger, but he gets it back, puts it up just over the front of the rim. And good. Are those Waltman's first points here in the ballgame? Yes, sir. He's got two and needs 18 more for 1,000. 18-13. Carn City leads by five. 5.25 to go here in the second. Save to Winger. Winger, three-point shot on the way. Good by Winger. He's nailed a couple of those three-pointers, and it's 18-16. Six points now out of Winger. Love well, listening to both coaches barking out the orders from the bench. Gearing up top to Bailey. Bailey going to find Gearing again, and they'll just keep going back and forth now. One-hand pass over to Tate Bailey and up top to Chase. Tate Bailey down in the right corner. And fantastic ball handling skills being displayed right now. Looks like Bob in that competition you were in in high school with that ball handling. It took you all the way to, like, New Jersey. <laughs> Said no one ever. Ball up top down to the corner to Bailey again. <laughs> Craver up top. And uh, Pierce on him defensively. They knock the ball away, but Kramer gets a back shot from the left elbow. No good. Ball tipped up. We're going to have a foul called. That's going to go against Gehring. And Keystone will get the basketball. That's just the third foul rung up here against Carn City. Two on the side of Keystone. You really like the tempo of this ball game, Mike. You know, it's only an 18-16 ball game. Not a ton of points on the board, but there's some physical play taking place. Officials are consistent. They're allowing the players to play a little bit. So, playoff basketball right around the corner. Yeah, it's coming up next Monday or Tuesday. We'll, we'll see what's going on. We're going to know more tomorrow. Tonight's the last night these games count toward the playoffs. I know some teams are playing a couple more games this week, but, of course, they would not count toward the playoffs. The ball comes into Wingard on the bottom block. Kicks it up top. Hogue, three-point shot on the way. Looked good from here, but it's off the back of the rim. The ball tipped out. Waltman gets a break started to chase Bailey. Bailey back to Waltman. Waltman shot good. Waltman. Gets it to go, and it's 20-16. to 16. You can tell those guys have done it a few hundred times in their careers together. Ball controlled by Pierce on the right side. Goes back up top to Wingard. Right side, Pierce shot, three-pointer on the way by Pierce. And it's good. It's 20-19. It's back to a one-point ball game. Pierce certainly had the look, pulled the trigger. Ball to the corner, Chase Bailey fakes, drives, kicks it up top to Sherwin, then to Gehring, Gehring three-point shot on the way, and Gehring nails a three-pointer. It's 23-19. Or, excuse me, that was Boer getting that one. That's uh, Eric Boer with the three-pointer. Want to make sure we're right. Ball to the left side, sell, down to the baseline. Say shot on the baseline, no good. Rebound pulled down by Winger. Winger shot partially blocked by Roop, comes out, still loose. Winger gets it back. Didn't give up. Here's Pierce, three-pointer on the way. Off the back of the rim, no good. Fight for the basketball again. Goes out of bounds, and it stays. Keystone basketball, last touched by Boer. A nice effort. Nice hustle down there. Out of both teams, really. Keystone the beneficiary here. Ball comes in, tipped out of bounds by Roop. Saved by Coach Pellis. <laughs> Shows he's got good range of mobility. He's got good hands yet, you know, for an older guy. Older, oh. he's younger than us. <laughs> Ball up top. Of course, here. everybody is, it seems, anyway. Well, dirt is, too. <laughs> Ball from the left side. Shot taken good from the left corner. That Sell nails the three-pointer. It's 23-22, lead back to one. Sell now with five in the ballgame. He's got five. Winger with six. Say with four. Pierce with three. Easton with two. Foul called here on Sell. Sell just a little bit too uh, touchy up top there. Yeah, he's trying to manufacture a turnover. Makes just a pinch too much contact. 
23-22. Next step therapy, second quarter, 2.22 to go. Oh, lost out of bounds by Boer on that far side. It goes back to Keystone. Great example there. Wingard was in the area and literally caused the offensive player to take his eye off the ball. Hogue to the right corner, into the paint to Wingard. Fight for the ball. Waltman rips it away. Now Chase Bailey will bring it across the timeline. Bailey to the right side to Boer. Boer has it knocked away by Hogue. It'll stay Carn City ball with just under two minutes. Kramer getting set to check back in for Carn City. You know, Kramer's a younger player, Mike, but boy, he sure doesn't look like it on the court. Plays well. Ball comes inbounds to Sherwin. Back to the corner to Bailey. Bailey around the defense. Kicks it over to Kramer. Kramer fakes drives on the baseline. Kramer puts up the shot short of the mark. Got his own rebound. He's going to put it up strong. He'll be fouled. They're going to get wingered on this one on the arm. That'll be his second. Team's fourth. And up to the line goes Kramer to shoot two. I think both coaches have to be really pleased with their defensive style of play. They played physical. They have only committed four and three fouls respectively. Keystone with four. Carton City with the three. That shot is good. Yeah, the foul Bob goes on Sell, not Wingard. So Kramer, that is his fourth point in the ball game. Carton City one of one from that free throw line. Make it two of two. Money in the bank with that shot. We've got a timeout, partner. It's full timeout. We'll break. Minute 48 to go here in the second, 25-22. We'll pause about 30 seconds. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic District 9 Basketball on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. Homeowners and do-it-yourselfers, right now is a great time to redo your kitchen into a space you'll love. At Kale's Factory Direct Kitchens, we'll help you design and build a beautiful custom-built hardwood kitchen that will last, and you'll save money. How? At Kale's, there are never middleman markups, hidden charges, or sales commissions that could add 40%. Don't overpay for your kitchen cabinets at big box stores. Get them direct from Kale's Factory Direct. Right back here after the timeout, 25-22. Carton City leads Keystone. Here on the EYT Media Network, explore Clarion D9 Sports.com. We're in the next step therapy second quarter. Panthers will have the basketball. Full court, full court pressure being put on here by Carn City. You know how you break this. Don't ever let that well, they 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 close. A couple <laughs> dribbles. <laughs> Ball should never touch the court. Pass, pass, and pass again. Well, up top here is Pierce with it. Passes over here to Hogue. Driving his Hogue right to the hoop. And uses all the rim it goes. It's 25-24. I bet Coach Stemmerich over there was going, why are they dribbling? <laughs> <laughs> A good question. Ball right side, Sherwin. Back up top it goes to Bailey down to the corner. Sherwin in the right corner. Finds Roop at the free throw line. Almost lost it. Gets it back over to Kramer. Three-pointer on the way by Kramer. It's off the mark. Rebound Roop. Roop. And a great shot by Roop. Good rebound. Good shot. 27-24. Roop has a vertical that reminds me so much of yours. Well, he has some work to do yet. <laughs> he has a little bit of work to do. <laughs> He's got to have springs seconds. in those shoes. I'll tell you what. He can get up there. The ball tipped away. And here comes Carn City. Bailey with the break started. Bailey's going to take it himself. Puts it up high off the glass and scores. And it's 29-24, 42 seconds. Bailey, 13 points the ball game. Pierce in traffic. We'll get it over to Hogue. Hogue gets it across the line to Sell. Sell takes the dribble in, takes the three-point shot. No good. And goes out of bounds. And it goes to Carn City off of Peter's hands. Great opportunity here to save for the last shot. Not so sure that we'll see Carn City do that. I would. <laughs> you would go for the last shot at about a minute 20. <laughs> Some days I think that's a wise move. And then Tyler over here, he would go for the last shot starting right at the beginning of the quarter. <laughs> it's not a problem. Down to 14. We've seen that before. About eight. Ought to get the offense moving. Bailey looks up at the clock, sees it. Down to six. 
Here's Bailey, dumps it left side. Kramer, two seconds on the clock. Shot of the way, it's off the side of the rim. And the putback no good by Kramer. So we go to halftime, 29-24, as Carn City leads Keystone here tonight at Keystone High School. We'll take a timeout. We're going to come back. We'll have the first United National Bank, the Fun Bank, halftime show on the way. Five-point lead for the Gremlins here at halftime. We'll pause about three minutes, get a lot of those great sponsors in, and you're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic District 9 Basketball here on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. At Tri-County Homes, we strive to keep you, our customer, involved in the process of building your dream home and making sure it is the perfect design to fit your needs. While the home of your dreams may come from one of our many floor plans, others may want to redesign a plan to make that home the perfect home. Make adjustments to the floor plans, choose additional options, and much more. The best part is you don't need any experience. Even when brought a quick idea drawn on a simple dinner nap, it's no problem for the designers at Tri-County Homes. We can take your idea and turn it into your dream home. So break out all of those great home ideas and stop in or call today. Let's turn your dreams into reality. See more at tricountyhomes.com. Stop in or call toll free 1-800-540-1295. Free factory tours are also available. Located at 511 Main Street in Shippenville, All-American Awards and Engraving is expanding to provide even better customer service with that personal small-town feel. Father, Jim Carroll, and son, Ian, are now the co-owners of the newly expanded 5,500-square-foot facility that is now open and ready for business. From embroidery to engraving to Green to personalized gifts. All American Awards and Engraving is ready to help you. Make your organization, business, school team, or event stand out with All American Awards and Engraving's quality promotional products. Visit their showroom for apparel, trophy, and awards ideas at 511 Main Street or visit their website at allamericanhq.com. Just minutes south of downtown Clarion on Route 68, CNA Trees has been in the nursery, landscape, greenhouse, garden center, and gift room business for 30 years. With over an acre of retail, a great place to find that perfect plant, tree, or gift for you or a friend. We have you covered on your landscape projects and home decor from start to finish. Stop by CNA Trees, one and a half miles south of Clarion Mall on Route 68. Open seven days a week. Be sure to follow us on Facebook. Just minutes south of downtown Clarion on Route 68, CNA Trees has been in the nursery, landscape, greenhouse, garden center, and gift room business for 30 years. With over an acre of retail, a great place to find that perfect plant, tree, or gift for you or a friend. We have you covered on your landscape projects and home decor from start to finish. Stop by CNA Trees, one and a half miles south of Clarion Mall on Route 68. Open seven days a week. Be sure to follow us on Facebook. This is Corey. He made two big mistakes. His first mistake was not going to Laurel Eye Clinic to have bladeless LASIK. His second mistake was trying to pet what he thought was his cat without wearing his glasses. Don't be like Corey. Call Laurel Eye Clinic. This is Corey. He made two big mistakes. His first mistake was not going to Laurel Eye Clinic to have bladeless LASIK. His second mistake was trying to pet what he thought was his cat without wearing his glasses. Don't be like Corey. Call Laurel Eye Clinic. All right, back here at Keystone High School tonight. It is uh, Keystone trailing Carn City by the score 29-24 here at halftime. We're in the first United National Bank halftime show. And we'll take a look at those Red Bank Chevrolet stats that the governor has so eloquently put together. I'll tell you what, Mike, leading the way, Chase Bailey, 13 points. 
Uh, from there on out is a very balanced attack. Luke Kramer checking in with five points. Nathan Waltman, Mike Rupi adding four. And Eric Boer with three as a team two of two from the free throw line. They have connected on five three-pointers in the ball game. As we look at Keystone, very balanced attack here. Brett Winger leads the way six points, followed by five points out of Logan Sell, four points out of Colin Say, three points out of Brandon Pierce, and two each out of Gavin Hogue. Cameron Easton and Xander McHenry as a team, also two of two, and they have made four three-pointers. That kind of explains why this is a 29-24 to ball game, two-possession ball game. All right, again here we have a five-point lead for Keystone here at the half. We'll have the Governor's keys to the second half. They'll be coming up as well. And again, I want to let you know, too, tonight's game, the importance here when we talk about uh, what's at stake, that Oaks building supply. We didn't talk about that at the beginning of the game, uh, but uh, we should call it the Tyler Oaks, what's at stake. We won't do that. Uh, but, no, Oaks Building Supply, great sponsors. And Bob, um, what's at stake? You know, a win here, you don't know. I mean, tomorrow uh, the playoffs are going to uh, be seeded, and every win is going to equate to something. So, you know, this one tonight could be the difference between a home game, not a home game, whatever, especially if you're Keystone. Yeah, you know, very important, of course, a new format this year. A number of changes, obviously, with the state playoff system. Things had to change, obviously, the – COVID restrictions affecting a lot of things now. We will be bringing you playoff action. I can't tell you where. I can't tell you when. I can't tell you boys, girls. I'm going to tell you we're going to be bringing you some action. So you've got to keep on checking out uh, EY, any of the EYT sites, of course, uh, which would be Explore Clarion, Explore Jefferson, as well as D9Sports.com. Yep. So we'll be there, and we're going to take one more time out. We'll just pause a couple minutes on this one, and we're going to come back out here. Governor's Keys to the second half are coming up. It's 29-24 as Carn City leads Keystone here at halftime. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic District 9 Basketball and Explore Clarine and D9Sports.com. Sweet Basil Italian Restaurant and Bar in Shippenville offers daily specials for dine-in or takeout. Burger Sunday, Ravioli Monday, Lasagna Tuesday, Wings on Wednesday, Pasta Night Thursday, Fish Friday, and Prime Rib Saturday. In addition to the popular specials, there's a wide variety of pasta, pizzas, sandwiches, salads, appetizers, and homemade desserts. There's an option on the menu for every member of the family. Sweet Basil crafts their own bread, dough, sauces, and pies to give an authentic Italian cuisine and a one-of-a-kind experience. Sweet Basil, located off of Exit 60 of I-80 on Paint Boulevard, strives to invest in the local economy by supporting local farmers and using and promoting their products. To view their menu, visit Sweet Basil Italian Restaurant and Bar on Facebook. Call 814-226-7013 to place your takeout order. Owners and operators, if your business depends on your truck, then we've got you covered. From simple oil changes to complete engine rebuilds, Bauer Truck Repair has the tools and the know-how to get the job done. We also offer 24-hour roadside assistance anywhere, anytime, any weather. Our techs are ready to get your truck fixed and back on the road. We even offer towing and load transfer services. At Bauer Truck Repair, we understand that every minute and every dollar counts, so trust your business with our business. Bauer Truck Repair, located off exit 60 in Chippenville, you can also find Find us online at BauerTruckRepair.com or call us at 814-226-6023. That's 814-226-6023. Right back at uh, Keystone High School. Glad you be with us tonight here on the EYT Media Network. Explore Clarion, D9Sports.com. We're in the First United National Bank Halftime Show and time for the governor to... Look into the crystal ball, and what do these teams need to do? Very close ball game. Anything changed from your uh, predictions of what they needed to do from uh, before the game? No, yeah, not really. I think the only thing Current City needs to do is find a little bit better of an answer as far as getting penetration into the paint. I think if they can do that, you know, look, they've connected on some three-pointers, had pretty good success ratio from three-point land, but connect on the paint a little bit, try and uh, get a few more fouls called uh, against Keystone here in the second half. I think things will bode well. I think for Keystone, you don't change anything what you've done defensively. Your defense has been disciplined. It's played very well. They have uh, taken care of business in the areas which they needed to defensively. Anytime you limit Carn City to just 29 first half points, I think you've got to be pleased about that. But offensively, they need to get some better looks. They need to get a little bit of penetration in their own right, get some better looks, take higher percentage shots. It's a two-possession ball game, so it's anyone's game from here on out. 
All right, again, those are brought to you by Gatesman's Auto Body, and that'll wrap up the First United National Bank, the Fun Bank Halftime Show here on Explore Clarion. And 29-24 is where we find ourselves. We go to quarter number three, and the sponsor for quarter number three is Penn State Dubois. And as we've said all year, Bob prefers Dubois. Carn City will take the ball out of bounds as we start this third quarter. First half move right along. These teams just going right at it. And here we go, Carn City with it. Bailey right side, and Bailey's going to be fouled. They're going to get Hogue with a bit of a push. First foul rung up early here. Kramer to take it out of bounds right in front of the Carn City bench. Bailey, deep three-point shot. It's off the back of the rim. Waldman, it kind of went off his shoulder. He kind of misjudged it coming off, and uh, Keystone will get the ball. A little bit of a curve caught Waltman off guard. Ball over to the right side. Pierce over there. Comes up top to Winger, and then left side to Hogue. Into the paint, say, shot over top. Roop, no good. Winger's there. It has a block by Waltman, but he gets a shot back. Doesn't go that time, and the rebound that time by Waltman. Boy, how about Waltman for patience? If he if he comes in a split second earlier, it's going to be a foul call. Good job in his part. Ball to the right corner. Comes back up top to Roop. Roop back to the right side. Sherwin with a shot on the way. Good by Sherwin, an Eric Schick agency three-pointer. And it's now 33-24 as Carn City jumps up to their biggest lead of the ball game. It's eight. Yeah, Sherwin, his first bucket in the ball game. Ball to say up top. Over to Hogue, left side, dumps it into the paint to Wingard. He fakes, puts it up in traffic, doesn't go, got his own rebound, reverse layup. Good, good job by Wingard to stay with that one. A little bit of old school there with that reverse layup. Eight points now out of Brett Wingard. 32-26, Carn City's lead is six. They control, here's Kramer, down to the left corner to Roop. Roop comes back up top to Bailey, Chase Bailey behind the back dribble. Marks it back near the center circle. Into Roop on the oop, and Roop with the shot, good. 34-26. Nice adjustment by Roop to haul that pass in. Gives him six points in the ball game. Hogue to the right side, passes off to Pierce. To say at the top of the key, back to Pierce on the right side. Pierce to Winger. Winger driving. Winger fakes, dumps it out. Shot taken by Sell on the right side, off the back of the rim, no good. Rebound chase Bailey. Here's Bailey working it up the court quickly. Bailey over to Sherwin. Sherwin into Roop. Roop back to Sherwin. Roop in the left corner. Up top to Bailey. Bailey right side to Kramer. Kramer fakes, drives on the baseline. Tried to pass it off. It's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay Kern City ball. Yeah, Kramer looking for the higher percentage shot. Wants to dish it off to one of his teammates. Ball inbounded here. Bailey with the shot. It is in and out. No good. Rebound by Wingard. Hoke pushing it across the timeline. Over to Sell. Hands it to Pierce. Pierce works this it to is, Wingard. This is an important trip down the court. Keystone, they trail by eight. Can't fall into the double-digit category. That will take them out of their current offense. Ball tipped out of bounds by Sherwin. It'll stay Keystone basketball. Hogue inbounds it to Pierce. Five minutes to go in the Penn State Dubois third. Sell with a shot, no good. Rebound underneath by Sell, but it's knocked away. Waltman comes up with it, and ahead to Bailey. Bailey. Working the basketball down the right side of the lane. Kicks it to the left side. Wide open three-pointer for Sherwin. It's no good. Rebound by Roop underneath. Roop lost the ball, and it's going to be picked up here by Winger. He it just kind of slipped. Yeah, lost his footing initially, and, of course, lost control of the ball at that point. Foul called in the lane. A bit of a hand check in there. Keystone ball underneath their own basket. The Panthers just looking for some points here. Ball comes out to Pierce at the free throw line. He drives down the right side of the lane. Basket good. He's fouled, and he'll go to the line for the old-time three-point play. You know, Pierce is a guy who throughout his career seems to just step up when you have to. When you really need points out of him, he's able to come up with big ones. 
remember a couple of years ago over at uh, Clarion Limestone had an outstanding ball game. Officials, it's a clarification here time-wise. Somehow there's not 44 minutes left in the <laughs> quarter. Tyler's over there going, what? Do I got to add all that time on? <clears throat> so 4.41 as they get the clock set. Making sure everybody's aware it's showtime after this attempt here. Pierce wants to make the old-fashioned three. He's got five in the ball game and shots off the mark. Rebound by Roop. Clock moving here. Carden City leads by six. Ball in the corner. Kramer cross court up top to Sherwin. Sherwin fakes, drives, puts up the one hand shot on the line. No good. Roops there for the putback. No good. Right for the basketball. Goes out of bounds. Waltman last to touch. Keystone gets it back. Yeah, Waltman unable to find a handle on that one. If he finds the handle, it's a sure two, but got to hold on to that ball first. Ball left side to Pierce. Up top to Say. Say shot from the left elbow, rolls around, doesn't go. Here's Bailey with the basketball. Chase Bailey quickly getting it down the court to Sherwin. Sherwin shot on the way. No good. Rebound is by Pierce. Just under four minutes. Six-point lead for Carn City. McHenry is going to double dribble. Easton gets set to check in here for the Panthers. You know, Mike, at halftime, the score was 29-24. Keystone with just four points here in quarter number three. Bailey takes his time right now as he works it across half court to the right side to uh, Tate Bailey. And up top to Sherwin, down to the left corner to Roop. To Sherwin, cross court right side. Tate Bailey, three-pointer on the way, no good. Rebound by uh, Wingard. Wingard gives it to McHenry. To the right side. Up top here, over to Easton. Find Sell. Sell driving on the baseline, and he's going to be fouled, and he's going to get a chance to go to the line to shoot a couple. See who got caught here. You can pick a couple, and we're going to say it goes on uh, Chase Bailey. So his shot is up. It's the front of the iron. Keystone now 2 of 4 from the free throw line. Roop will exit. Gehring will come in. Gehring, one of those physical players out there. Your kind of player, Mike. Shot is up, and that's good. Money in the bank with that shot. Leads down to five. 3.05 to go here in the third. Driving Bailey. Lost the basketball, but it's picked up by Tate Bailey. Bailey. He's back up top to Sherwin. Bailey in the right corner. He and Sherwin playing catch. Sherwin hands it to Chase Bailey. And we get a foul away from the ball. They're going to call the push in the paint. They're going to call it on Waltman. Waltman didn't like it. Waltman and McHenry talking a little bit on the way down the court. I think they were talking about the up-and-coming baseball and track season. I think so. 34-29, Carn City leads with 2.38 to go here in the third. Heater, shot taken from the top of the key. It's just short of the mark. Goes out of bounds, and Carn City gets it back. And... <clears throat> They're going to call a technical on Coach Bellis. <clears throat> And it, uh, they're going to say that it uh, came after the call against uh, Waltman in the paint. Shot is off the mark. Yeah, winger shoot for the two free throws, and Keystone will get the ball back. So the technical foul assessed. Albellis will have to sit after the technical. 
That's hard. <laughs> well, just think when we started doing this years ago, and certainly when you played, coach had to sit there. So the shot's good. Yep. Now Keystone will get the ball back. In a four-point ball game. Easton across the timeline. Left side corner, Heater shot on the way by Heater. And it hits one of the uprights. It's a turnover. I was just going to say, when I played, you weren't allowed to stand up for any reason until there was a timeout. You did. They were going to nail you. Well, and the ball was stuffed, and it was actually a bushel basket yep. from no three point peaches line that, and, you know, hung. Uh, yep, courts were just, you know, were uneven. You played on sand, right? <laughs> ball up top here to Tate uh, Bailey to Sherwin on the right side. 34-30, Carn City leads by four. 2.05 to go here on the third. <clears throat> Tate Bailey works it to the left side. To Sherwin, to Bailey, to Waltman. Waltman takes a dribble, dumps it down to Gehring in the one-hand shot. Good by Gehring. Good look by Waltman to Gehring. 36-30. Nice pay patience. You find the open shot. Take what the defense gives you. Winger near the center circle. Takes it to the left side to McHenry. Now to Easton. Easton driving into the lane. Spins around. Puts up the shot. No good. That ball loose, loose, loose. And it goes to Carn City. Goes off of McHenry. Say Pierce and Hogue back in here for the Panthers. Big line change here for Coach Heath. A minute 28 to go in the third. Wouldn't be surprised if we see Roop return to the ball game soon. Both he and Kramer. Big thing in this game, nobody in foul trouble either. It's been it's been pretty tame that way. Here's the shot by Bailey from the left corner, no good. And out comes Sell with the basketball. Here's Sell weaving down the right side of the lane. And he's going to get tied up. And uh, the Land Pro possession arrow. I believe points into the direction of uh, Keystone. I don't know where the hustle of Bailey creates that tie-up. Ball comes in deep to Pierce. He can take it back across the line. That's all right. He'll bring it back. Wingard with the basketball. Comes up top to Hogue. Hogue's going to have to dribble here. He's getting close to a five-second closely guarded count. Up top to uh, Wingard. In to Say, turned around jumper by Say. Good by Say, and it's 36-32. Say is almost automatic on that shot. Six points for him in the ball game. Ball to the corner, Bailey driving on the baseline. Ball stolen in the paint by Pierce. Keystone can cut this to a one-possession ball game. Set up for the final shot, unless there's something incredibly wide open. So left side, top of the key. Holding the basketball, finds uh, Say on the right side. Say drives, kicks it out to Pierce. Finds Hogue. I need to get Sell. excited until you get about eight seconds on the clock. And to Say, the ball loose, out of bounds, and it goes to Carn City. Bailey just let it go. He was going to go after it, and Newton saw it was last touch by Say. That is not Bailey's first day at the rodeo. So 5.9 seconds. Bailey with the basketball, four seconds, three seconds. Bailey in the lane. Bailey's going to be fouled up top. It's not a shooting foul. You take it out of bounds with 1.6 seconds. You can get about four shots off in that amount of time. That's a great foul to give there out of Hope. Because Bailey's one of those guys, you give him the real estate, he's going to make you pay. Well, to Sherwin, shot at the buzzer. No good off the side of the rim, no good. 36-32, we go to quarter number four. Don't go away. Good finish coming up here at Keystone. We'll pause 30 seconds. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic District 9 Basketball and Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. One of the biggest risks to your future could be running out of money during a longer-than-expected retirement. Many people have not yet taken the time to determine if they will have enough assets to last throughout retirement. Our Retirement Income Evaluator can help you develop a roadmap and actual recommendations. To learn more, stop by our office located at 162 South 2nd Avenue in Clarion. Give us a call at 222-3990 or visit JennyClarion.com. Jenny Montgomery Scott, LLC, member NYSE, FINRA, and SIPC. Right back here at uh, Keystone High School, we go to quarter number four. It's a Dubrook fourth quarter. And Carton City will have the basketball as we get started in this 
Fourth, it's 36-32. This game's going to involve a lot of chess coming down to stretch partner. Between two coaches know how to win. Ball controlled by Roop up top. Yeah, they are two very, very adept coaches. Uh, Coach Bellis, very seasoned, of course. Know all about Greg Heath. Ball coming up top here to Kramer, to the right side to Rue. Rue from Kramer. Ball knocked away, but Kramer gets it back, and they're going to have a. They're going to call over the and back on uh, Carn City. I'm surprised because the ball was tipped. Yep. Well, the official down there thought he saw them get control before he went back across the line. It's the only reasoning there. Here we go, 36-32, four-point lead for the Gremlins. Ball up top to Pierce. Pierce fakes, left elbow to the baseline. Same. Kicks it back out here to Hogue. Hogue driving down to the baseline, puts up the scoop shot. Good, and it's a one-possession ball game, 36-34. What patience out of Hogue. He gets point number four at a critical time. One possession ball game. Bailey to Roop here at the top of the key. Roop will work the basketball to Gehring. Gehring to the right side to Bailey. This is a gutsy move. Waltman is not out there. Shot taken. Kramer no good. Ball tipped. And we're going to have a foul on the rebound. That's going to go against Gehring. That'll be number six here against the Gremlins. So the next one puts Keystone in the one and one. It's a two, two point game. You know, Waltman is not out there. Sherwin is not out there. No one in foul trouble. They're just getting a little bit of rest. Hogue has it tipped away. And across the line, he'll get it here to Wingard. Wingard to Pierce. Left side to Say. Say to the left corner. Comes back up top to Pierce. Pierce to Wingard again, finds Pierce. Pierce takes the three-point shot. That's no good. Rebound pulled down by uh, Boer. And now here's Bailey with the basketball across the timeline. Two-point lead for the Gremlins in a Dubrook fourth. Six minutes to play. In wide open, Kramer shot good. And it makes it 38, 34. Good look by Bailey. Kramer now seven points. Pierce on the left side, top to Say, dumps it into the paint to Wingard, kicks it out to Self, three-pointer by Sell is good, and that's an Eric Schick agency three-pointer. It's a one-point ball game, 38-37. Sell on nine points, Michael. That is the fifth three-pointer made here by Keystone tonight. Roop left side, kicks it over to Boer. Hands it to Kramer and up top to Gehring. Gehring over to Bailey. Keystone drops back into a zone defense here. And zone really pushing this offense back. Carrying to the right side to Bailey. Bailey looking in. Kramer's covered. Finds Boer. Boer will take the three-point shot. It's off the front of the rim, and it goes out of bounds. Turnover to Keystone. Waltman back in along with Sherwin. Both sides doing some substituting. Got Peter back in. 5.05 in this one. Well, we expected a good ball game, Mike. We're getting our money's worth here. Absolutely. Ball left side to Pierce. Into Say. Say fakes on the baseline. Fade away jumper. Good by Say. What a nice look by him. And it's now 39 38. Keystone regains the lead for the first time since early in this one. They've trailed in every quarter, but take the lead here, 39-38. Waltman to Bailey. Into Waltman. Waltman takes a big dribble, basket good. 40-39, timeout taken by Coach Bellis. That's vintage basketball there, using the glass. Increases the percentage of that shot falling immensely. Again, timeouts brought to you by Gatesman Heating, Plumbing, and Air Conditioning up in Shippenville. Give them a call, 782 3280 for any of your heating or cooling needs. And of course, today with that sun like that, you're probably thinking about air conditioning. I know huh. I am. <laughs> it's just starting to finally get warm Ooh. a little wee bit. Heading in the right direction. <laughs> 
But here, uh, the game at hand, a one-point lead here for the Gremlins. Foul situation, six on Carn City side, two on the Keystone side. Someone from Keystone's got to get down inbound this ball. Waiting for the official just to set it down and start the count. We've seen that several times. That has happened. McHenry back in the ball game here for the Panthers. We'll give it to Wingard at the center circle to the left side to Pierce. Panthers trail by one in this Dubrook fourth quarter. 4.15 to play. Ball into Heater. Heater, big move. Nope, kicks it out to McHenry. McHenry shots on the way. Good by McHenry. Three-pointer by him. It's 42-40. Keystone by two. Big time shot out of McHenry on that one. Waldman with the basketball up top. Rook gives it to Kramer. Kramer to Walmart. Tipped out of bounds by McHenry. You know what they call McHenry here at school? Fort. <laughs> You're reaching the archives a little bit on that one. <laughs> Ball comes in to Chase Bailey. and Garden City with the basketball. They trail by two with 3.40 to go. Last uh, games tonight that will count toward the playoffs. Ball to Roop at the top of the key on the right side. Bailey on the left side. Into Waltman. Waltman takes a couple dribbles. Lost it. Spins around. Puts it up strong. And it doesn't go, but he's fouled. And Waltman will go to the line here to shoot a couple here for the Gremlins. Waltman was trying to get that one to fall. Would have been huge if it could have. It's the line here, looking to tie it. Trail by two. Shot is off the mark and no good. That is only the third free throw attempted. Carn City was two of two prior to that one, so now two of three. Waltman has six, needed 20 coming in to join that 1,000 point club. Shot's good there, seven points out of him tonight. So down to 3.15 to go, 42-41 Panthers. Winger left side here to Pierce. Pierce has oh, it stolen. Pocket. Bailey will take it the other end of the court for the easy layup, and it's 43-42, Carn City. What a steal by Bailey. 15 out of Chase Bailey. McHenry in the lane, dumps it off to Heater. Heater spins around, blocked by Waltman, then out of bounds, and it goes to Carn City. Last touch by Winger, they're going to say. 43-42. Huge possession right here. Bailey takes his time, hands it to Sherwin. If you're Keystone, there's no need to take any chances defensively, stay in your defense. You have Bailey. some fouls to give if you're looking ahead. Bailey shot on the baseline is good, and it makes it 45-42. Still a one-possession game, but a three-point lead. 17 out of Bailey with that shot. Here's McHenry to Winger. Winger with Kramer on him defensively. Man-to-man -man defense here by Carn City. Heater fakes, drives, puts it up high off the glass. No good. The ball loose, goes out of bounds, and it will stay Keystone basketball. It looked like Bailey was going to be able to get a hand to one. Just couldn't reel that one in. 2-10 on the clock. Ball comes in to say, shot on the way. No good, rebound by Waldman. 2.05 to go, three-point lead for the Gremlins. Bailey's going to have to get it across the timeline, and he will to Sherwin. Sherwin double-teamed up top. And we're going to have a timeout taken. We'll hold it here. We'll see. It's still going to be a full timeout, but got a lot of sponsors to thank, too. Uh, we do want to thank Carrier Insurance, Gatesman's Auto Body, Red Bank Chevrolet, Hager Paving, s and w Auto Body, the Allegheny Grill, uh, Sweet Basil Restaurants, J&J &J Feeds and Needs, Tionesta, or as Dustin says, Tionesta Builder Supply, uh, Clarion County Community Bank, J&J &J Trailer Sales, Zocro Motors, uh, Clarion Ford, Kales Kitchens, um, Clarion Forest VNA, great sponsor as always, Carly Tire, CNA Trees, Dubrook Laurel Lye Clinic, the Eric Schick Agency, Luton's Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning, the Fun Bank Inn, uh, McMillan Carpets, all 
Great sponsors here on the EYT Media Network. Wanted to get them all mentioned in there because, you know, you're out and about, folks. Uh, without them, certainly we can't do this. And with playoffs coming up, starting to get a little bit expensive, too. And not to mention paying your huge salary. Uh, you, you get a salary? Hmm. I don't because it all goes to you. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> I was going to say, if they gave you anything, I want it. Minute 52 to go here with the uh, Dubrook fourth quarter. Carn City with the basketball. And the three-point lead. Ball comes into Bailey. Here we go. Going to be a great finish here. Root to Walton. It's going to be a game of chess. There's 1.43 on the game clock. It's probably going to take about 15 minutes. Bailey to Waltman. Waltman spins. What a move by Waltman. 47-42 Gremlins. That's what nine for him. It is. It's a vintage Waltman move. Hogue on the right side. Hogue into the lane. Panthers looking for a basket. Hogue shot off the front of the rim and the rebound by Sherman. Boy, he gave it everything he could to try to get that basket. Now you're going to have to commit some fouls because you only have committed three here. That clock's going to evaporate on you. Ball handed off. Nope, it's stolen by Sell. Here's Sell on the other end. Sell blocked by Waltman, but a travel first is going to be called on Sell. Nice hustle out of Waltman. He gets down there. Looks like he's going to get physical and have to commit a foul. Instead, forces that travel. And it forces a timeout also, partner, as we're one minute even. Yep, we get a timeout here again, 47-42. The score, five-point lead for the Gremlins. Actually, not one minute even. I looked too quick up the scoreboard. Yep. So uh, we have Gatesman Heating, Plumbing, and Air Conditioning. Again, our timeout sponsor, as always. And again, Bob talked about it. Do you want to stay tuned? We'll know more about the playoffs coming up tomorrow. And we would uh, like you to stay tuned to Explore Clarion D9 Sports as soon as we know anything. We certainly will let you know where we're going to be at. We don't know... Uh, to uh, what the situation is going to be at its schools. You know, we know around here, uh, we know a lot of the folks here very, very well and, and work well. Um, but uh, some of the northern schools and stuff, we don't know what their protocols are going to be. So it's kind of a mystery. So yeah, we'll see. Again, it's going to be a challenge because, you know, certainly the, the way they're doing the seeds this year are going to be completely different. You're going to see, you know, your home team. Uh, your team <coughs> will, will remain at home, obviously the higher seed yep. scenario. So either way, it's current city ball. That was right the first time. We did have exactly a minute in this one. Yep. I thought it was like 103 or something, but okay. Sherwin has it stolen away by Hogue. Hogue puts it up strong, and the charge is called on Hogue. Hogue took it up strong. And Bailey earning that one. One time Coach Heath, you see him not liking that call whatsoever. It was close. 49 seconds. Surprise really Keystone's not fouling more here yet. They still have two to three to give. Bailey to Roop. Roop on the baseline, but the foul's gonna be called before the hold shot uh, will not be uh, given, so they'll take it out of bounds. Just the fifth foul, so still got a couple to give a couple to give here, but We'll have to give them rather quickly. Kramer to take the ball and bounce. Does to Sherwin. And Sherwin will be fouled. That'll be foul number six. Still one more. With 38 seconds and a five-point Carn City lead. It seems to be some confusion here. and We will get a 30-second timeout. It's a quick 30. And uh, again... Uh, They'll discuss things. Gatesman, Heating, Plumbing, and Shippenville. And again, not a bad timeout. You want to make sure everybody's on the same page here. You trail. It's a two-possession ball game. For only one, you can roll the dice a little bit, let a little time, try and manufacture a turnover, create something that way. But you got to score twice. Yep. yep, and that's the big thing with that five-point lead. They haven't created the five-point shot yet, but it'll be coming. <laughs> I don't know. We've you know we've seen a few this year, uh, highlight wise. Anyways, we weren't at the games. But we've seen a few this year beyond the midcourt mark. Yep. So Kramer to take it out of bounds on the far side in this Dubrook fourth quarter. We'll see a probably a quick foul here by Keystone. 
Down by five. Ball comes into Bailey. And Bailey's going to hand it off to Roop, and Roop will be fouled here. So Roop will go up to shoot the one and one. Oak checks back in for Easton. Roop has six points in the ball game. Chase Bailey leads the way for Carn City with 17. Roop at the line, dribbles, bends the knees, shot is short. Sell with a rebound. Yep. Sell gets it ahead to Pierce quickly. Pierce's shot's on the way. No good. Rebound by Waltman in the paint. Waltman will be fouled from behind. And Waltman will go down to shoot the one and one. The foul's going to be rung up here on Wingard. Get Waltman with nine points. I'm going to say I've got a chance to see Waltman here coming up in uh, Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference play. Hopefully. With any luck. Shot is short. Here's Sell again with the rebound. 22 seconds. Sell to the baseline. Shot no good. Ball comes out. Rebound pulled down by Sherwin. Ball tipped out of bounds, and it stays Carn City basketball. Last touch by Pierce or Wingard there. Keystone's going to put on full court pressure with 15 seconds or down by five. Love the hustle. Ball into Waldman. Back to Bailey. Down to 12 seconds. Bailey is going to be fouled here by Pierce, and Bailey will go to the line to shoot one and one. Nine fouls here against Keystone, so still the one and one with nine seconds. Yeah, this is the guy that uh, you really don't want to send to the line, but you have no choice. Current City is elected to bring everybody back and not have anyone in the paint here. Shots up and rattles the cage in and out. Down to five seconds here. Ball left side, Say. Four seconds. Shot by Say. No good. Rebound, Wingard. Wingard turnaround shot is good at the buzzer. 47 44 is the final. As Carn City holds off Keystone here to get the win here tonight against the Panthers. We'll take a uh, quick time out. We're going to pause this 30 seconds and we'll be back for uh, the wrap up of this one the Clarion County Community Bank post game show. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic District 9 Basketball and Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. We want to say thanks. Thanks, of course, to our customers. After all, you're the reason we're here, and your support means everything to us. But as we all face the disruptions of this unprecedented time, we owe special appreciation to our community's first responders, medical professionals, and caregivers. In today's battle for the health of our families and neighbors, we're in your debt for your heroism, generosity, and caring. Thank you. Right back here at Keystone High School. Final score again, 47-44 is Carn City. Knocks off Keystone tonight. This is the last contest uh, that counts before the playoffs. And, uh, well, we're in the Clarion County Community Bank postgame show. Let's go to Robert over there. Robert's got the Red Bank Chevrolet statistics. Chase Bailey really set the tone in this one, Michael. 17 points out of Chase, 9 points out of Nathan Waltman, 7 points out of Luke Kramer, 6 out of Micah Roop. And three each out of Cole Sherwin, as well as Eric Boer. Two points out of Luke Gehring. As a team, Mike, they've made six three-pointers in the ball game, but were just three of seven from the free throw line at one point, two of two, but then got a little cold. And again, however, they're able to hold on here, 47 to 44. For Keystone, it was a very balanced attack in this one, just not quite enough. But Brett Winger leads the way, 11 points, followed by nine points out of Logan Sell, eight points out of Colin Say. Five points out of Brandon Pierce and Xander McHenry. Four points out of Gavin Hogue. Two points out of Cameron Easton as a team, Mike. Four of seven from the free throw line and did connect on six three-pointers in the ballgame. Pretty close ballgame. Came down to the final minute of play. Um, it was a fun one. Yep, we were very, very good. Good way to wrap up that quote, quote, regular season because it still teams with a few games. And time now for our Hager Paving Player of the Ball game. And, Bob, as you look over your stats and uh, in this one, who do you like? I don't think there's any debate on this one. Chase Bailey. Chase Bailey made play, big-time plays on the offensive side as well as defensively. Chase Bailey is your Hager Paving Player of the Ball game. All right, there's your Hager Paving Player of the game. Also want to thank Red Bank Chevrolet for the stats, and that will wrap up 
our quick Clarion County Community Bank postgame show. And again, stay tuned to the EYT Media Network. Explore Clarion, D9Sports.com, Explore Jefferson, Explore uh, Venango, all of them. Uh, we'll let you know where we're going to be at for the playoffs next week. I do want to thank our producer, Tyler Oaks, from my broadcast partner, Mike Kalinowski. This is Governor Bob Dunkel saying, hey, let's be careful out there. <laughs>